Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is where you're watching. This is my take on the homemade spot welder that's going all over the uh, internet right now. I got the idea from Grant Thompson, King of Random. I'm sure if you guys are catching my video, you've already seen his. He made a metal melter out of a microwave transformer like this and some wherever it is. Some heavy four gauge wire like this. Uh, he cut the primary off, put two wraps of that heavy wire in there, and it goes from several hundred volts down to only about two volts with several hundred amps of current. Uh, in case you're wondering, here's different here's different transformer wires out of different transformers. This really thin stuff, that's the one you're trying to cut off. The one that has the thicker wires, you're leaving that on the transformer. You're only cutting the thin stuff off um, in order to get you enough current going into the transformer to give you the welding properties. But check out his channel. He does a step-by-step -step on how to do it. I'm just giving you my idea on the, on the welder. He's using wooden rods. I decided to go with copper, but the same transformer inside there, lug attached there, so that I made the transformer with lugs and then I made this because I'm intending to try to make some sort of a clamping device separate from the big bulky machine that I can clamp onto a car body or whatever, push my big beautiful button and make it go. Anyhow, without further ado, it's a really simple design. I've got a power switch on the back simple power switch turns it on and off uh, I've got it recessed so that it won't tear anything up almost everything out of here was from a microwave even the power cord the switch inside here is from a microwave the fuse is from a microwave so that it doesn't burn anything up the casing is just uh, radio shacks gone out of business well they got everything for like 30 to 50 percent off so needless to say I got me a cool project box that allowed me to Put something in there with a neat little button on the side. Uh, there should be enough room in there. I'm going to try to put a simple timing circuit, but I'm not there yet. Um, what I have is my rods running out, spring-loaded, so that they can move up and down. And I've made this little cantilever. When I push it down, it clamps the material so that I don't have to be anywhere near that end. That's the big Bernie scary end. No one wants to be near because I'm clumsy and I'd like to keep these attached. So I made a clamp, which is just a simple one by two board that I cut, and then I used a router on these edges just to smooth them. You can use sandpaper if you want, but just to smooth them so it's more comfortable to hold on to. Left the rest of it square, because I don't care. I haven't even painted it. I literally just got done with this thing. So I took a two and a half inch hole saw and made a circle, screwed it to it, uh, literally right dead center of the circle down to the lowest part I could fit on this to attach the circle here and then down at the far end of that circle I punched a hole through the circle through the board and then I punched matching holes on these two by fours found me a little metal rod in the scrap cut it off and slid it through the whole thing screwed the two by fours on that gives me the lever now to keep this thing from popping back up I sanded the bottom of that circle so it's got a flat spot when you go all the way over down it drops in that flat spot and now it's not moving it's clamped and it allows me to clamp now the clamping pressure is adjusted by adjusting these rods these are the contact rods it's just piece of a piece of grounding rod you can get from any hardware store cut off two of them put them on there the nice thing is I can keep changing them I ran that big heavy wire through the copper pipe and down and attached it to the grounding lug and so that way you don't have these big wires draping everywhere I didn't like the look of them, but that gives me a nice clean open space. I can put my metal in just like so. Make sure I get to the spots I've uh, sanded because uh, the metal's got protectant on it and I don't want to You clamp them and it stays. Turn your unit on, push your button, red hot. I'm sure that was more than it needed. Oh, 
I was less than a needy because as I said you gotta you gotta have flat metal and this is probably the worst metal to show let's try this one more time just so I don't look like an idiot there we go now she's burning right there see that not not going anywhere the, the point is your metal needs to be clean and flat so that you make good contact and it melts okay and then I can stand back here where it's nice and safe push my button and melt I've got almost no money at all in this thing if I leave that any longer than that she's gonna melt through it uh, let's see if you guys can see those it's very hot welds you can see the bluing way out away from the welds it's working beautifully and this is working on 110 not 220 simple 110 cord and uh, it's beautiful you gotta gotta thank grant thomas for the initial idea i was just tooling around the internet one night couldn't sleep so came across his channel and voila now i have a spot welder have no idea what to use it on right now but i have one i guess my next project is going to be a metal break so that i can have a use for it but once i make those little hand terminals i'm trying to hand clamps i'm trying to make i'll show you guys those give you some ideas because I've got a car that I'm going to try to start re restoring pretty soon. And that'll be great for spotting the new metal on. But none of this is new. The only thing I like is that clamp. It allows me to actually clamp the material and stay far away from those electrodes. A lot of them out there have big wooden arms. Which is nothing wrong with it. But they get these wooden arms out there. And you grab it with your hand and you're pushing the arm down. Well, as clumsy as I am, something's going to slip and I'm going to get hurt. So I like to be able to stay back here where it's nice and safe. And then just push my big beautiful button and everybody's happy. Then I have metal that's all bent and it's good to go. If you want to know how to build this, it's pretty self-explanatory. These are just blocks of two by fours that I used for my, uh, there's my grounding lugs for the, for the two sides, which will allow me to attach other, other apparatus to it later. But see this little bolt here? Yeah, I don't, I hope you guys can see it. A little bolt here and there's a little bolt there. I drilled that all the way through and then drilled a large hole on the opposite side of this block to set a nut in and clamp that down so the nut is recessed in here. What happens is when I run that bolt down through that nut, the end of that bolt hits this metal rod and locks it in place. So if I need to move these rods, I can loosen this bolt up and move them around to make sure that this stays in perfect alignment. Both, of, both sides have that. It was a real simple clamp. I just loosen it up, move the rod if I need to, twist it, whatever, tighten it down, and it's not going anywhere. They're locked. And that allows me to do that. The, the actual hinging is just a simple screw on each side to this block, and at the back of the block, I have a spring for a carburetor, and that just holds this whole arm up. And then this, just and without these blocks, this arm swings way out there. But we didn't need that. You only need them one inch gap maybe to put your material in because if you're trying to weld anything that big you're not doing it with a spot welder so with this it allows me to not come flying way open and have to worry about that I can keep it close put my metal in get everything lined up hit it and let go and it's there and then once I'm ready push the button back here and she's done anyhow Go check out Grant's channel, The King of Random. Uh, he's got awesome ideas. Let me know what you think of this. Anything I can do to improve it. Yes, I know it looks a little cobbled. It is literally made of junk. It is a microwave. It is scrap wood. I mean, it's even got paint on it, and that's not me painting it. That was just on it. It's literally scrap wood. Scrap copper pipe from, from an old job that was done. Everything here is, is used parts. And yet it works perfectly. So it doesn't take a lot of money. The only thing I bought new for this whole project was those electrodes. I bought one foot of this stuff for like two bucks. That's going to keep me going for a long time. So let me know, guys. Uh, and go check out his channel, as I said. He's the one that gave me the initial idea. A lot of people have ideas out there, and a lot of them are great. He's the one who gave me the original idea. I just want to give him a shout out. Thanks. Thank you.